Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. Today we're going to take a look at the world of infinite geometric series and how you can calculate their sums. So let's take a look now. Here we're looking at a case of the infinite geometric series that can be summed, even though it has an infinite number of terms. And the way you can tell if, it's, if it can be summed is if the common ratio's magnitude is less than 1. So going back to maybe even Algebra 2, we learned this formula that the sum of the infinite series is a, which turns out to be the first term, divided by 1 minus r, which is the common ratio. Now, when we work in sigma notation, there are a couple of different ways this can be presented. Um, it can be a little bit, a little bit odd because of the way the index works with the expression. But if we want to start with n equals 1, our geometric series looks like the one on the top here, a times r to the n minus 1. Or sometimes we start with n equals 0 as the first term. And so if we are lowering the end value on the, on the lower index, then we're going to raise it 1 on our exponent in our expression. And so we have the summation of a r to the n from 0 to infinity. And if you write out a few terms of each of those, you'll find out that those are identical, just two ways of saying the same thing. And the formulas are the same. So the key is when you, when you see the geometric series to recognize it and understand when it is convergent and that when the magnitude of the ratio is less than 1. If the magnitude of the ratio is greater or equal to 1, then it's divergent, and you can pretty much just state that by inspection. So the tricky part, sometimes it doesn't always look like it's geometric to begin with. Sometimes some rewriting is needed, and so we see this case here. We have the summation of 1 plus 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n from 1 to infinity. And so the first thing we're going to do is a rewrite. We're going to divide through each term in the numerator by the denominator which gives us a summation of 1 over 3 to the n plus a summation of 2 to the n over 3 to the n. So here we're showing this sum and, sum and difference rule for, for, for series is being used here. So you can split that up into 2 after we divide through. And then some kind of common things you see when you're working with infinite series. Remember that 1 to the n is always 1. So if we have 1 divided by 3 to the n, if we wish, we can go ahead then and write that as 1 over 3 all to the nth power. And then by properties of exponents here, if we have 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n in our second summation, we can write that as 2 over 3 to the nth power. So here we're looking at, at two distinct cases of geometric series that can be summed because the common ratio, the quantity being raised to the power, is less than 1. The value of a can sometimes be tricky to determine when you're dealing with geometric series if you're just looking at the formulas. Because if you notice here, we're starting our, our summations are beginning with n equals 1, which means we need to interpret our, our series this way is a r to the n minus 1. So does that mean we need to do a rewrite here? I mean, it is possible. You know, For instance, I could take a 1 third out, out front, and then write that as 1 third to the n minus 1. If we just show that for the first of the summations. And that would put it into the standard form that we see here given in our formula. But that may not be absolutely necessary, because really what we mean when we say a, in the geometric series is the value of the first term. So if you just go ahead and figure out what's the value of the first term and then what's the common ratio, which is the quantity in the parentheses there, then you can kind of get away from worrying about, well, am I looking at the index value 0 or 1 to start this whole thing? So in this case, if n equals 1 and we plug that into our, our first summation, that shows that a is equal to 1 third to the nth power which we can see by inspection if we do the rewrite. But that would not be absolutely necessary. Many people choose not to do the rewrite if they just know what is meant here really when we say a. It's the, it's the value of the first term of your series. So in a similar way, then a is 2 thirds in our second summation. And so, so what we're going to do then is apply our formula twice and then add those together by properties of summation. We can take the sum of each and then add the sums together. So 
pretty much plug in and go now. So on the first case, the summation is a one third divided by one minus r one minus one third. And for the second sum, we have two thirds divided by one minus two thirds. And clean up our arithmetic. One third over two thirds plus two thirds over one third. So this shows that the sum of one third to the nth power, starting at n equals one, is equal to one half, and the sum of two thirds to the nth power, beginning at one, is equal to two. And we add those together to get our final sum for our series, which is five halves. So kind of a nice example because it's not it's not really obvious at the outset that this thing is a geometric series. Uh, the tip off is when you start seeing the constants all raised to the nth power. You know, remember that we can always say one is equal to one to the nth power. And so when we start seeing this occurring in our series, it's not a bad idea to start thinking that maybe we could express that somehow as geometric, which allows us to find the exact value of the infinite series, which is not always a very easy thing to do. As we, as we find out moving along. Here at P. Clark Calc, we do practical calculus for the busy math student, but if you'd like to learn more about infinite series and geometric series in particular, you can check them out on my textbooks, which are available for a nice price on Amazon. And until next time, I'm P. Clark.